yeah, for as long as I could remember uh, performing at a high level, achieving at a high level, totally controlled me. Um, from the age of five years old, when I declared that I wanted to play basketball at Vanderbilt University, uh, much because my father had played there, uh, my grandfather had played there, I was very w aware of what that place represented, how special it was to our family. Performance uh, to me was everything. Achievement was everything. Accomplishment was everything. Um, you know, so much so that I felt like how I shot a basket through a hoop um, really defined how people felt about me. And I can remember just many nights realizing that on the West Coast, they're two hours behind us. And that means there could be another young man out on the blacktop or in a gymnasium working or shooting baskets. And I would get back up out of bed and put my shoes back on and go back outside and start shooting baskets because there was nobody that was gonna outwork me for those spots. That moved into my college career and being at Vanderbilt and, and shooting over 1,500 baskets a day because nobody was gonna shoot more than me and doing more weightlifting than anybody because nobody was gonna lift more than me. And so, yeah, I did have a sense of accomplishment, but never did I sit back and say I had arrived. There was always what was next. We grew up in church and church was a big part of our family. Every Sunday and Wednesday night, my family was very involved in church. I can remember sitting in a Sunday night service, kind of a revival type setting and the pastor said something to me that struck a chord. And he talked about that God so loved the world, that this wasn't just a love, this was a so love that moved Jesus from the throne to the world that came to save me. And that if I wanted to experience that and ascend back to heaven with him, that all I had to do was take a step of faith and step out in that aisle and walk forward and say that I need Jesus. And at that time, all I ever knew was performance drove everything around me. And so I was so willing, because I was at the end of myself, to say, I'll do whatever it takes. I need him to come into this with me and hopefully release me of this, this feeling and this emotion. God was placing me right back into the thing that had held me in bondage for so long. And he was gonna do a work through that experience of freeing me, of understanding what abundant freedom feels like. And in the process, he was gonna use my story to help 15 to 18 year old boys come and experience freedom before they set out and impact the world. Coaching young men has become a passion of mine. It's a call, it's not a career. We are here to usher young boys into manhood. And in my opinion, it's the toughest demographic that there is in the world to serve. A 15, 18 year old boy in today's culture of all of the images and all the things that they're bombarded with, we're swimming upstream against the culture of what it means to be a man. That they were created for a relationship and they were created for a cause and they come alive when they are pursuing those two things in a freeing environment. The whole idea around trick shots was something that our family was doing in our backyard in our pool. And then it grew to be something that we did at our camps. But the ultimate thing that we're trying to do is bring joy to people that see those shots. Whether you're live and, and on the scene at one of our camps or in a gym or in a, at a pool or on a building or wherever we are or you're coming across the video uh, we hope it brings a smile to your face. We hope it brings joy to your life. We hope it's a life-giving uh, setting that you see and that you see the genuine enthusiasm that can exist between sport, kids, and an action. And that these kids would understand that they have a unique gift. And I have a gift that can place that ball in a basket. And it's odd and weird and fun, but that is the great connector that tears down so many relationship boundaries. I exist to make his name famous. And the way that I do that is to love the next one he places in front of me. Whether that's on the basketball court, in a camp, in a locker room, one of my players, whatever that is, I'm here to love the next one that he calls to be placed in my path. I'm a beloved son of the King, 
regardless of how we perform, what that scoreboard says could never ever change that. And when I go home, I don't have sleepless nights like I used to when I was a teenager because I totally know that I'm accepted, loved, and cared for by those that know me and love me and ultimately by my Savior, Jesus Christ.